Open the floodgates of heaven. Oh, hallelujah. Let it rain. Hallelujah. Woo. I just want to say, open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. I wish I had some help today. Open the floodgates of heaven. to uh, share with you this morning, uh, especially you new converts that are coming in and 
you that maybe hadn't hadn't been refreshed in a while uh, there was two things that God said he said if you're willing if you're willing and obedient you shall eat the good of the land eat the good of the land, good of the land. Amen. And uh, when you when you come to God, the Bible said, first of all, you must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Amen. If I was gonna be a Muslim, I'd want to be a good one or a bad one. Whichever one you say. If I was going to be a, a Catholic, I'd want to be a good one. Amen. But I became Pentecostal. I want to be a good one. Amen. Amen. I mean, when I first got the Holy Ghost, there was a lot of things that I did not understand. I'll have to be honest. But I did them because my pastor said it was right. That's right. Hallelujah. Thank God. That's the reason God gives you a shepherd in your life. Because you don't know everything. Amen. And after, after preaching for 57 years, I still don't know everything. But I know more today than I did yesterday. Could we lift our hands and praise Him? Praise you today. We thank you, wonderful, precious Savior, for your Oh, I tell you, I, the Holy Ghost is here in such a mighty way this morning. How many of you feel the presence of the Lord? I, I tell you, and I, I'm hoping and praying we're going to have a baptism. You know, when I got the Holy Ghost, uh, I got the I got the Holy Ghost on Wednesday night in uh, January. It was cold, 1956, and started preaching about three weeks later. And uh, but uh, when I got the Holy Ghost, my pastor said, uh, "Are you ready to be baptized Sunday afternoon in Jesus' name?" I said, yes, sir, if you say so. I didn't know, I didn't know what Jesus' name was. I didn't know what the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost was. All I knew was, woo, that I was born again. I had got something I'd never had before. Amen. And I tell you, when you get the Holy Ghost, you need to get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin. Because the Bible says you promise the blessings of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Would you worship a little bit?
Everybody shout hallelujah. 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 Everybody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody shout it's revival time. It's revival time. Thank God. Everybody say God bless our good evangelists. God bless our good evangelists. Jesus. Praise. Praise. Hallelujah. Well, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, come on, let's do it again. Let's act like we mean it this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many is ready for some church today? Amen. Yes, sir, brother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I tell you, I enjoyed myself last Sunday. Amen. We had such a time in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I am looking forward today. I know the Lord wants to do something in this house this morning. Yeah. Come on, I, I, the, 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 they, they said it in the Bible, it's like fire shut up in my bones. Right. I, I can feel it this morning. Hallelujah. It's all over me. Hallelujah. Like Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory I'm, I'm so thankful that Brother Smith had, had me back this morning. I love coming here. There's such a good presence in this house. Hallelujah to God. I love to be able to go to a place and be able to stand behind the pulpit. And say that there's such a sweet presence in the house of the Lord. Ooh, I, I, I'm here to tell you there's a lot of places you go and you don't feel that. But I, but I tell you what, I love it when I can come to a house and there's a house, there's a place of worship. Uh, that there's a spirit of worship. Hallelujah. And I'm thankful for that today. Praise the Lord. If you have your Bibles, if you'll turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 19, starting with verse 16. Hallelujah. I feel that the Lord is already doing something in this house this morning. He's already speaking to somebody this morning. Yes, amen. And, and I just want to help, help push it along this morning. Because there's some people in this house this morning that have a need. That still need some direction from God this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. And I feel like He's going to do that this morning if you open your heart to Him. Amen. The book of Matthew chapter 19 and starting with verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He saith unto him, Which Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man saith unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What like I yet? Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, Go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then Jesus said unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who can be saved? But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God. All things are possible. Somebody say that with me. With God, all things are possible. We can't do it by ourselves. It's impossible to do it on our own. But if God is in it, I said if God is in it, we can do anything. All things are possible through Christ who strengthens us. Hallelujah. This morning, just for a few minutes, I want to preach on this subject. Trading the holy for the unholy. 
Let's go to the Lord in prayer and let's ask him to help us in this house this morning. Lord, I love you, Jesus. Lord, I'm so thankful for your presence this morning, God. I'm so thankful for what I feel in your house this morning. Lord, I ask God that you would help us, that you would give us understanding of your word, God, that you would open our ears to the hearing of the word, that you would anoint our hearts with understanding. Lord, I am nothing without you this morning, but you are my everything. Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. Oh God, help us this morning, God. Lord, we're in need of you this morning, God. We need a touch from the throne of heaven this morning. Lord, help us to turn into the throne this morning. Open the windows of heaven and pour down your love and your mercy upon us this morning. In the name of Jesus, we thank you and we give you praise for it. In the name of Jesus, let's give the Lord a hand cup of praise in this house this morning. Hallelujah. You can be seated this morning in the fear of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This morning we read here in the book of Matthew and we find that there is a young man that, that has a, a whole lot in life. Matter of fact, the commentary finds the, the, the finds a man that calls him a gentleman because it said that he was a ruler in, in his time, in his day, in his country. And that he was one to have a lot of money, a lot of wealth. Um, but we find in this passage of scripture that he came to Jesus looking for something a little more than what he had. Um, he did in his life have a little desire for something more than all the wealth that he had. Um, but the Bible says that he had great possessions. Um, and, and we find that he held dear to his great possessions in life. Um, that he was not willing to give them up. That when he went to Jesus, uh, he asked him, he said, uh, Good master, what shall I do to have eternal life? Um, and we find that the Lord told him, he said, Well, just keep the commandments. And the young man said, Well, Lord, um, I've kept all these commandments from my youth up. Um, he said, Well, then if thou be perfect, go and sell all that thou hast um, and give unto the poor. Um, but the Bible says that when the young man um, had heard these things, um, that he walked away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Um, oh, I'm here to tell you this morning um, that he was not willing to give up of what he had um, to live for God. Um, he was not willing to give up all the treasures um, in the world to follow Christ. Um, he wasn't um, this, He wasn't um, willing to give up everything um, that he had in his life um, to, to lay it all down for Christ. Um, but I'm here to tell you that he was not willing um, to give up the material things of the world um, to give it all to Christ. Um, can I tell somebody this morning um, that the material the things of this world, uh, the temporal pleasures uh, of this world are not going to get you nowhere. Um, I'm here to tell you that they're only going to last um, for a little while. Um, they're going to only last for a little season. Um, that's all. They're going to only make you happy uh, for a day or so. Uh, but then when they are gone, um, you're back in that same old rut that you was in before. Um, you're, you're back uh, down and out in the gutter. Um, you're back down and out uh, trying to find another way out. Uh, you're trying to dip your hand into something else. Uh, my friend, I'm here to tell you this morning uh, that you're not going to find what you're looking for uh, in the world. Uh, you're not going to find it in nicotine. Uh, you're not going to find it in alcohol. You're not going to find it in the bar rooms or the pool halls. Uh, but I'm here to tell you that you are sitting in a place this morning uh, where you can find every answer that you are looking for. You can find your joy. You can find your peace. You, my God, you can find strength. You can find encouragement. You can find something that will uplift you. I'm here to tell you that there's nothing like the presence of the Lord. I've never felt nothing in this world that can even compare to the presence of the Lord. Yes, amen. amen. That's it, brother. Amen. But we find that this young man wasn't willing to give up what he had. The Bible, the Lord told his disciples, he said that it's going to be hard for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Um, just let me lay a foundation just for a few minutes. Um, then he went on and he told him again. He said uh, that it's hard, that it's easier for a camel to fit through an eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the gates. Um, when he says an eye of a needle, He's not talking about a sewing needle. Um, but back in that day, it was a doorway. Um, that a camel had to get down on his knees. 
uh, and crawl underneath it to get through it. Um, they, I, I'm here to tell you that it was so small um, that, that the camel could barely fit through it. Um, it was narrow and it was short um, and the only way to get yeah. to the other side um, was to go through. Um, was to get down on the camel's knees um, and, and to crawl his way through. Um, that's the only way he was getting through. Um, and uh, my friend, I, if you're asking me, uh, that's slim chances. Um, that's not a very good chance of uh, uh, somebody that's got a lot of pleasures uh, that's not willing to give up this world for God. Um, I'm here to tell you this morning uh, that this young man, he was not willing uh, to give up the unholy. Uh, he wasn't willing to give up the unholy uh, for the holy things of God. Uh, my God, I'm here to tell you this morning uh, if you're going to make it in this world, uh, if you're going to make it in the life of God, uh, you got to be willing to lay it all down. Uh, you got to be willing to lay down uh, the unholy, uh, the unrighteous. Uh, my Bible tells me uh, that the uh, God that the righteous have never been forsaken, uh, nor his seed uh, has ever been begged for bread. Uh, I'm here to tell somebody this morning uh, that this is a day and hour that if you're going to live for God, uh, this is a day and hour that you just need to give your life completely to him uh, and say, God, here I am. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing, uh, but if you will lead the way, uh, I will follow. Give me the holy things. Uh, let me be righteous. Uh, let me stand for holiness. Uh, let me look holy when I leave the church house. Uh, let me look like I do when I'm in the house of God. Uh, I don't want to live a uh, borderline for God, uh, but I want to be all that I can be for Christ. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. My God, I wouldn't give this thing up, Brother Smith, for anything in the world. No, no. Hallelujah. Brother Smith, we was talking in the office this morning, and Brother Smith said he's been preaching for almost 60-something years. He's been pastoring here for 22 years, I believe he said. Uh, my, uh, that's a long time. That's a long time in the Lord's business. Uh, and my God, and I pray every day that I can make it. Uh, and why? Because I want to know what, what the Lord has in store for me every day. Uh, why? Because just getting the Holy Ghost ain't enough. Uh, to be able to wake up uh, every day ain't enough. Uh, be able to just to live for God day by day is not enough. Uh, why? Because he's been better to me uh, than I've been better than I've been to myself. I'm here to tell you that there's nothing in this world like the love of Jesus. There's nothing in this world that can take the place of the love that I have for him. There's nothing that can take the place of the happiness that I feel when I'm in his presence. There's nothing like his joy. I'm here to tell you there's nothing like when I'm out, down and out. When he comes down and he uplifts me, there's nothing like it. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. My God. Brother Smith sung that song this morning. And he gave me a, one of, or he gave us one of his CDs last Sunday. And it has that song on it, My First Love Is You. Oh, and all week I got hit replay. And I just replay that song. Why? Because I'm here to tell you that he was the first love that I ever knew. Why? Because he was the first one when I didn't know what love was. That he came down to me in the middle of the night. And he said, child, I know that you don't know the path that you're on. But you know what? I got to work for you. And I'm just going to tell you right now, son, that I love you and if you'll just follow me I'll lead you no matter how hard it may be I'm here to tell you God has always been there glory hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. Bless you, Lord. praise the Lord, Lord. Hallelujah. the book of Mark chapter 8 you don't have to turn there if you don't want to verse 34 says and when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall it a man give in exchange for his own soul? Philippians 1 and 21 says, For me to live is Christ, and to die is to gain. Oh, can I tell all of you friends this morning that by God that there's no better way than to live is to live for Christ. Why? Because I know at the end of it all, I'm going to gain more than this world can ever give me. I'm here to tell somebody this morning that I'm willing to pick up, pick up this old book and let the world know that I'm set on the right road and I'm going to follow Jesus. No matter how many great the possessions may be in my life, no matter what the cost may be, can I tell you Jesus Christ is worth it all? Can I tell you this morning that my God, that there's no greater joy than living for God. There's joy, there's victory in the Lord. 
good preaching. Bless him, Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. The Bible said that God came to the coast of Sidon and Tyre, and there made him a woman that began to cry out. Lord, my daughter is vexed with the devil. Lord, she's vexed with the devil. Lord, help me. And the Bible says that she just proceeded. And she tried to get into his attention. But the Bible says that he just ignored her. And he just kept on. And his disciples said, Lord, and she cried after her. Bend her away. Do something with her. Get rid of her. She's annoying. She won't leave us alone. She's following after us. But the Bible said that when he turned to her, of the house of Israel, that there's nothing I can do for you. The Bible says that she became more persistent, and she went and she bowed down, and she began to worship him, and she began to love him, and tell him, Lord, I'm going to worship you. Whether you help me or not, I'm going to magnify you. Lord, I don't care what the cost may be. I don't care if you bless me. I don't care if you touch me, but I want you to know that I have a need, and I'm going to worship you, and I'm going to give her The Bible, the Lord calls her a dog. And he said, it's not meant for me to give the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. He insulted her. I like that answer. Oh, come on. He insulted her, Brother Smith. Yeah, yes, Brother sir. Jody, you know what she did? Yes, sir. She just, she just worshipped me. Right. Lord, you call me a dog? He said, but it's all I need. She said, it's all I need is a crumbs. She said, even the dogs eat the crumbs when fall from the master's table. Can I tell somebody this morning, you just need to pick up the crumbs? Come on, I, I don't care. I, I, I can tell you right now, everybody in this house this morning has gone through it. Everybody in this house this morning, we faced our problems. We faced our trials. We go through financial situations. But can I hear it? Come on, God. And my God, I'm here to tell you that God will supply your every need. Can I tell you that if you're just willing to pick up the crumbs that the master lays before you, can I tell you this morning, my God, that God will reach down and he will open up, my God, the windows of heaven and he will pour blessings down upon your life. That's why your pastor says it's better to get than to receive. Why? Because the blessings of the Lord are upon you. If you're willing to come before the Lord and say, God, here I am. My life is not my own. Oh God, everything that I have is not mine. But you placed it in my life. You've ordained it in my life. Lord, it belongs to you. Everything that I am, all that I have, it is yours, Lord. And I give it to you. I lay it before you. Lord, I give my y'all in all. Everything that I eat. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. If you've got a need in this house this morning, I, I, can I encourage you to my God just to pick up the crumbs this morning? Why? Because to live is Christ and to die is to gain. Oh, what profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Well, they say whoever has the most toys at the end wins. My friend, can I tell you that that is wrong? Because whoever's got Jesus Christ at the end is going to be the winner. I'm going to tell you, I want my name to be written in the Lamb's book of life. I want to hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. I don't want to hear him tell me to part from me. You work with me, nicotine. But I'm here to tell somebody, I want Jesus Christ to know that there's still somebody that's still believing truth. That there's still somebody that'll stand for holiness Come on, pick up the crumbs this morning. Pick up the crumbs this morning. Come on. We gave nothing. Without Christ, we're nothing. But with Him, we're everything. Come on, without Christ, we'll never make it. But through Christ, I'm here to tell you, He'll send us on the right road. He'll take us to where we need to be. Can I tell you this morning, oh my God, that you're going to need in your life. And it's all you need to do is pick up the crumbs this morning. And God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. She said, I would.
would be devastated if the Lord caught me a dog. Because that's flesh. But you know, she said, I don't care. I have a need in my life. Come on. And if it means me being a dog, Brother Jody, and I got to get to crawl underneath the master's table to pick up the crumbs that I need in my life. I'm here to tell you, I don't care what the cost may be. I want to live for God. I don't care what I have to do. I want to be sold out to God. I don't care what troubles may come my way. But I can't do it on my own because God's got to be in it. But can I tell somebody this morning that without the Holy Ghost, we're never going to make it. Without a renewing of every chance we get, we're never going to make it. Why? Because we got to have a soul-filling station. We can't stop at that gas pump and then fill up and expect us to last us for eternity. But I'm here to tell you, we got to stop and we got to fill it up every chance we get. Why? Because I can't live my life without God. I can't go back to the way I used to be. I can't go back to the sin that was in my life. But I got to press on. I got to follow Christ. I got to lay down my every burden. And I got to pick up my cross. And I got to go where the Lord will lead me. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Oh, come on, somebody, just pick up the crumbs this morning. Just pick up the crumbs this morning. Oh, the Lord has laid them before you. He's put the crumbs there. And if you need to put your broken heart back, if you need to pick up the broken pieces, God will help you put the puzzle back together this morning. He'll help you place them back together piece by piece. But I'm here to tell you, the only way to do that is to lay it down at the feet of Jesus. To lay it all down before you. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, God. Look at Mary. The Bible says it. She was nothing but a sinner that she was broken. But the Bible says that Jesus said and meet at Simon the Peter's house, who was a leopard. The Bible says that she came in. It, it was all supposed to be just a dinner of, of men, nobody else there, just them. But she didn't care. She came through. And she made her way through. And there said Jesus by him. And him being a leopard, he mocked her and made in front of her. But yet he forgot the sin that he was in. But yet Jesus sat there right there beside him at a dinner. I'm here to tell him and show him love. And here came a woman with a broken life, a broken heart that was disgusted and busted and didn't know what else to do. But the Bible says that she took the, the most precious item that she had in her in her life, an alabaster box of ointment. Oh my God, if you study upon that, there was only one place you can get it. And it was in Asia. And back then, the only way to get it was to have somebody to bring it to you or go and get it by boat. I'm here to tell you, it was a great costly. But the Bible says that she took it. Oh, but first, let me, let, me, let me go back. The Bible says when she came in, she fell at the master's feet. And she began to cry upon his feet. And she began to wash his feet with the tears of her eyes. And then she washed them, the tears off with the hair of her head. First, she went down and she fell at the master's feet. And she laid her burdens down before him. All of her cares, all of her worries and doubts, she put at the foot of the cross. I'm here to tell you, she laid it all down. And then she rose up and took the box and broke it and poured the omen over his head. Oh my God. And what did he say? She said, he said that she came up forehead to the crucifixion of me. My God, I'm here to tell you this morning. Just pick up the crumbs. Fall at the master's feet. And pick up the crumbs. And give God what he's looking for this morning. That him work in your life. That him move in your life. We got, my God, we can't give up the holy for the unholy. Oh my God. Oh my God. 
Bible says if the gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. That's it, amen. My God. Paul told King Agrippa, he said, Agrippa told him, he said, Thou almost persuaded me to be a Christian. But Paul said that I would that thee not be almost persuaded, but all together persuaded. Can I tell somebody this morning that I'm persuaded? Come on, that Christ is the only way. Come on, the only way out of this life is to lay down everything that's in our life and pick up our cross and follow God this morning. Oh, come on, can I tell somebody? Come on, I heard the message that Brother Smith preached to you Wednesday night. Oh, come on. I'm here to tell you that that message still stands this morning. Some of us are still sitting in the valley of decision and we don't know which way we want to go. But can I tell you, friend, I hope that you're leaning towards the Lord. Can I tell you, friend, that I hope that this morning you'll make up your mind and you'll just fall down and pick up the crumbs and give your life to God, then dedicate yourself to God. I'm here to tell you, He's the only way. Yeah. He's the only way. Let's stand this morning. Come on, hallelujah. I'm opening this altar this morning. Come on, I'm opening this altar. Come on. There ain't none of us strangers here this morning. There's not a one of us that's strangers this morning. If you have a need in your life, I want you to come and I want you to get what God has for you this morning. Come on. This morning. Don't, don't turn God away, but open your heart. Come on. God is in this house this morning, and He is there for you. Come on. This is the day and hour of the Lord. Come on. I'm here to tell you that this is your day to receive a blessing from God. This is your day to get what God has in store for you. Come on. Don't hold back. Don't be ashamed, but be an example. Come on. You got a need by, my God, you got a need by example. 